Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and today we start the week with some big news. Whether you want to read into it too much or not, that's completely your decision, but exciting nonetheless. It's a kind of news roundup today, if you like, and the big story is about a player who, if you've been watching the channel for the last few months, a name that I've dropped a few times, one that I've been quite eager to see get involved with Celtic, so quite happy with this one. Let's get into it. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. It'd be much appreciated as we try and charge towards 50,000 subscribers. It's absolutely free. So if you haven't done that, please drop down below and hit those buttons. But let's get into the news today, shall we? Kind of a Celtic transfer talk. Kind of not. I don't know how far to dive into this one yet. Is it time to get your hopes up? How serious are we talking here? I don't know. Exciting nonetheless. Very quickly though, before we get into that news... The international break is quickly coming to an end, thank God, which means Celtic are back in action this weekend. We take on Motherwell, of course, but that means that the regularly scheduled content should be back in the channel this week. Podcast, match previews, match reactions, the whole shebang it should be back, thank God. I'll be getting sick and tired of having nothing to talk about, but I'm glad that Celtic have given us a good way to start this week. The week of Celtic's return starts off with a bang. Which is lovely. So let's talk about a player that we have mentioned a few times in this channel. Someone who I have been saying quite like to see in a Celtic shot. Someone who's tickled my fancy, if you like. Let's talk about Sidney Van Hoydonk, shall we? Because over the past half an hour, some interesting news has developed, it seems. The Daily Record put up this article roughly 25 minutes ago when I'm recording right now. But this afternoon, quarter past one, Celtic make Sidney Van Hoydonk First inquiries as Bologna leave exit door open for outcast striker. The towering forward was linked with Parkhead last summer and interest could be revived in January. So the article goes on to say this. Celtic have reportedly made their interest in striker Sidney Van Hoydonk known to Bologna ahead of a potential January switch. Once again... Don't know how quickly you want to dive into this one or how high you're getting your hopes, but promising signs. Celtic reportedly registering their interest with Bologna over the availability of Sidney Van Hoydonk. Is this the striker option we've been waiting for? Is this the one we need? Let's talk about it. Now, of course, towards the end of the summer transfer window, we've done a full deep dive on Sidney Van Hoydonk on the channel talking about if he would be a suitable fit for Celtic, how his career was looking so far, just ultimately if it was a good option. Um, we came to the conclusion very quickly in the channel that despite, you know, taking away the, the, the links with Pierre Van Hoydonk, who is very obvious in the situation here, the father of Sydney and a Celtic icon, you could say, a, a 90s icon, Taking all of that aside, when you looked at the player in isolation, he did look like a, a good option for Celtic, considering his current situation with Italian side Bologna. Um, that interest, at, towards the end of the window, seems to be very real and seems to be reignited right now. If the Daily Record are getting their facts right and the, the sources are, are credible enough, then Celtic look like they want to reignite these, these kind of transfer talks that may or may not have been there towards the end of the summer window. Now, the understanding was that he came back to Bologna um, from his loan move to Herenveen in the summer. He came back, and it was very evident there and then that time wasn't going to be um, given to Sidney Van Hoydonk that he'd maybe have liked. They signed Joshua Zerxi, um, who was a big money signing for Bologna. I think he came in from quite a good side. I can't remember exactly what side now, but it came from... from Quite a good side, he came in as a starting striker option and it was made very e evident back in the summer that Sidney Van Hoydonk wasn't going to be the first choice striker at Bologna, even after a very impressive campaign with Herenveen last season in the Dutch Eredivisie. So, he's been sitting about kind of waiting for a move now, it's not really went to plan for him this season at Bologna and he wants out the door in January. He's only managed to rack up about 50 minutes of football this season for Bologna, making six appearances between the Serie A and the Coppa Italia. He has managed to score this season, despite his very little minutes. He got one goal for Bologna way back at the start of the campaign in the Coppa Italia against Verona, I believe. 
He's a guy who knows how to score goals. Here's his stats from last season when he was at the Eredivisie, when he was with Herenveen on loan. Inside 33 league appearances, he scored 16 goals in the Eredivisie. In the Dutch Cup, I believe it was the Dutch Cup, he scored three goals in four games. He scored a total of, in, in last season, he scored a total of 19 goals inside 37 games which is a really good record at a team that aren't exactly the creme de la creme of the Eredivisie. Now, can I remind you the last time we signed someone who was scoring goals uh, in the Eredivisie for a, a kind of lesser team? That went quite well. His name was Georgius Yakimakis, and he's someone that Celtic fans have been crying to get back by any means necessary. People said we shouldn't have let him go. Sidney Van Hooydonk went over to Holland, had a very impressive season, had a very impressive stint there. That actually went on from the year before as well, where he scored six league goals in 13 league games. He's a striker that knows how to score goals. I don't really know how he's not got his chances at Bologna. Yes, they've spent big in trying to bring in, and sorry, not trying to, we're bringing in Joshua Zuxi, but he's, he's still somebody who I think could have been a valuable asset to them, and it looks as though they're more than happy to let him go. Now, in terms of the situation what Celtic would have to pay, that's kind of unknown, and that might be where the stumbling blocks come in. Now, the positive is, he only has a year and a half left on his contract. His contract expires at the end of the 24-25 campaign. Bologna only signed him for seven and €750,000, but he is currently valued at €6 million. Euros. Now, how, where, where, does, where do you meet on that? For me... There has to be a kind of happy middle ground between that 750,000 and 6 million. Because you can't justify paying 6 million for somebody who's not playing, somebody who wants to leave, and somebody whose contract's up in a year and a half. And they only paid 700,000. They will want to make profit on the player, there's no denying that. But this is someone who I think there could be a happy middle ground for, maybe 2, 3 million euros, 2, 3 million pounds, whatever. And Celtic should be happy enough to meet that. This is somebody I think Celtic should go all in for. He's somebody who I have been trying to keep tabs on throughout the past few months. Not an awful lot you can do when you're only playing 50 minutes of football. But looking at his season with Herenveen last year, I think that he would be a fantastic option for Celtic. Listen, somebody who's coming in to be a striker here isn't coming in to... Unless they, they, they impress, unless they can do it naturally. Whoever we bring in isn't going to be in the team ahead of Kyogo. But we need options. And Sidney Van Hooydonk looks like a very good option. And that's taken away the um, the aspect of his father being a Celtic legend. You know, that's taken away Pierre from, from the situation. I'm not giving him that, that, what do you call that? What's that word again? What's the word? Nepotism. That's the word. I'm taking the nepotism aside from him being Pierre Van Hooydonk's son. I think that all signs point towards somebody who brings something into this side that we need. Six foot two. Scores goals. He isn't a big clunky, useless player either. He's got attributes in his game that make him a good, useful player. Not this big, slow, horrible, hard on the eye type. Six foot two, brings height into the team. Uh, a good finisher. Quite fast for his size as well. Two appearances already for the Dutch under-21s, uh, and you look at the players that they produce, he's clearly somebody that has been held in, in, in quite a decent regard over the last few years. It's just not went the way that he wants it at Bologna, and he's wanting out the door. However, that does come with a problem for Celtic, but one that I feel we can address. Sidney Van Hooydonk spoke about leaving Bologna and said what he wants when he leaves Bologna, and this was his comments. This was in another article that the Daily Record published a few days ago. Um, he said in an interview in Italy that uh, I'm a good team and I like it a lot, but I have to do what's best for my growth, for my career. I also have to play. In football, things can change quickly. There are two months left until January and who knows what will happen. Um, talking about Joshua Zuxi, etc, etc. But essentially, in these comments you can see here, one of the things he does say is he needs to play. He wants a move where he's going to go and play football like he was playing with Heronby. He was playing week in, week out, and he was getting the confidence in his game and the ability to go and score goals week in, week out. He needs that at Celtic. Now, can we promise him that with Kyogo being ahead of him in the start of 11 and Kyogo being Kyogo? Yeah, that's a bit difficult. However, this is another reason why we need to sign somebody like Sidney. It doesn't have to be Sidney Van Hooydonk, but this is one of the reasons. Whoever comes in in January, whatever striker arrives at Celtic Football Club in January, is going to be starting games. We're in a bit of a predicament. Because Kyogo and O could potentially both be away. They could be gone. Not 
transfer, the Asian Cup starts in January. They're going to be gone for perhaps up to a month. We cannot play for a month without a striker, without a recognised striker. Dyson Maida could potentially be away as well. That's somebody else who's got the ability of playing striker. We need to bring somebody in. And if Sidney Van Hooydonk wants football, there is a very real possibility, because Japan can go far in the Asian Cup, let's be real, very good squad, probably one of the best squads, if not the best squad in Asia at the minute. They could go far, they could go all the way to the end. Which means there's going to be a full month, potentially, for someone like Sidney Van Hooydonk to go and play football. Now, I know we have the winter break, but it is only for a couple of weeks. There will be chances for whatever striker comes into in place, and if he can hit the ground running... You ask the question to Kyogo and you ask the question to the manager, it's not going to be easy for him just to get himself back in the team. If Sidney Van Hooydonk comes in and scores goals, it's a massive opportunity. You've also got to remember, this is Sidney Van Hooydonk's only, I think, 23 years of age, let me just double check here, 23 years of age. Very young, um, with a lot of growth available in, in his game. So he comes to Celtic, signs a four or five year deal, Kyogo's getting on a wee bit. If Van Hooydonk lays the seeds over the next year or two, you could be looking at Celtic's next striker. And that's another reason why I think this is something we should go all in on. Brendan Rodgers has already said that he wants a striker in this January window. He wants that to happen. Putting two and two together, these inquiries seem like they could be very real. And it gets me very excited because this is the one I want. There was talk about, you know, Chris Garden, for example. People have been throwing in Lawrence Shankland as an option. This is the one that I've been sitting on for the past few months and thinking to myself, I'd love to see it happen. I just think that the signs are there for a good striker, um, somebody who knows where the net is, and a situation that Celtic can take advantage of with his current predicament at Bologna. So, make it happen, Celtic. Sidney Van Hooydonk will be watching. We'll be seeing how it develops. Are we looking at the next Celtic player? I hope so. That is generally the big news for today. There's not really much else to add. However, there has been some slightly worrying news that's came out over the past few hours, over the course of the night time that's just passed, and that's that Lewis Palmer has picked up an injury on international duty after a knock in training, which is not good. And it was the last thing that I wanted to see, considering the fact that we are already struck with injuries all throughout the front line. Not ideal at all. So, uh, yeah, after that fantastic assist that he got against Mexico, we were all ranting and raving about him. We've all been excited to see him play again. He might not be playing. But we don't have any sort of confirmation or news in regards to the length of injury, severity of the injury, or what really has happened. This is the only comment we've got. This is from the Honduras manager, Reynaldo Reda. Reda. He spoke to the media and he said um, there's a small discomfort that Lewis Palmer has and a duel after, uh, that he had with Sanchez. Um, that's that's essentially it. That, that is genuinely it. That's all we really know. Um, hopefully it's a small minor knock. Nothing that keeps him out for any length of time. Hopefully he's back in the plane. A long flight right enough to Glasgow and he's playing on Saturday. But we'll just need to wait and see. I, I don't think we'll hear anything else from the, the Honduras international camp. I think we're just going to have to sit and wait to see what Brendan Rodgers tells us on, on Friday afternoon if that's when his press conference is scheduled for. Um, let's hope it's nothing bad. It doesn't, you know, it's not. It, he's not came out and said, oh, he's, he's broke his leg, you know, so that's good. But let's just hope it's not bad. Aye. Didn't want to have to end the video with bad news like that. Right, that does it for today then. Um, a video that I wasn't anticipating... Uh, to make, it was just as I sat down to see the news for today that that article broke about Sidney Van Hooydonk and now it's got me very excited. So, let's watch how it develops. I'll be on the channel as always giving developments and updates in regards to the situation. So make sure to like and subscribe to stay with that and keep up with it. Um, if you have enjoyed, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. But that's it for today. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. Um, I'll see you all next time.